Hey guys, uh, thanks for stopping by Screen Magazine. My name is Mike McNamara. I saw this film and I laughed so hard I was crying. And you guys know, I actually don't laugh all that much, let alone laugh so hard that I fucking cry. And yeah, you know, it's the internet, so I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw some, uh, some F-bombs in here. I am here with the uh, director, cast, crew, whatever. It's a, you know, three great guys from the film Awful Nice. We have Alex Rennie, we have director Todd Sklar, James Pumphrey. How's it going, guys? Going great. great. Good. Good. I'm surprised you guys are up already. It's 3.30. We had to be. We were told to be here. <laughs> we were 40, 14 minutes late, which I think was all right. We were forced to wake up much earlier than we were used to. Yeah. So, uh, Alex yesterday made its world premiere. I think, as you guys will know when you see this film, Alex is a, a bit of a wild card. His character is a bit of a troublemaker in this film. I think everyone, do ever, does everyone think now when they meet you that they're like, this guy's gonna fucking do crazy he shit? Look out, yeah, and it's weird because I mean, graduated Harvard, you know, went to you know, eight, 18 years at quarterback camp, and this is what, you know, I am. I, I, do, I do online tutoring like between the screenings and stuff. But uh, yeah, people, people are a little hesitant, but I think once they get to know me, they know that I'm not going to do anything super crazy. Yeah. yeah. Super crazy. That's what I'm there. That's it's, what I'm there for. Yeah. It's all right. So Todd, give us a little intro to uh, to this uh, pair of brothers here. Sure, sure, sure. Well yeah, it's funny. A lot a lot of uh, a lot of these two and what they do in the film is based on uh, on me and my brother as well as Alex and his brother and then James was an extent as well with his sister. Uh, and it's interesting because all of us come from different sides of that where you know, they're both the younger ones, and I'm, I'm the, the loser older. shithead brother. Uh, <laughs> I'm a loser shithead brother as well. Oh, okay, yeah. nice. Well, I'm the I'm the non-loser shithead, but I feel guilty about it, so I feel like a loser shithead. So <laughs> Which is even worse. It that's is. Even, that's the, it is, that's the worst. Brother. I don't get to do the fun stuff, and I still have the self hate. In the <laughs> so, uh, so you guys. Uh, I'm always interested because this actually started as a really great short film called Alonzo Morning 92 Skybox Card, I think. Yeah. Close, close enough. enough. Close enough. enough. Something with Alonzo. <laughs> yep. um, I kept saying Alonzo Spellman, and I was like, no, that's that Chicago Bears guy that shot himself in the head. <laughs> <laughs> right. We have a short based on that, actually. Yeah. Yeah. A little darker. A little darker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's rare that a short actually really leads to a feature. You know, people always say, well, we're going to make the short. And then but this, not only did it lead to the feature, there's actual scenes from the short in the feature. So yeah. was that always the plan, or did you just jump when you saw this? Cause, uh, you know, the short was out at Sundance and everything. Well, no, it's funny. It's actually, uh, it, it, this is starting to come out now this week, finally. A lot of people didn't know this, but for us, it actually went the reverse way. We started with the feature. But we had a producer jump ship kind of three days before we were about to start. He had a bigger movie that got, got greenlit and he kind of took off in the middle of the night. So we thought our whole shoe was going to fall apart. It was called Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. you heard of it. <laughs> uh, but so uh, when he left, we kind of felt like we got to make the most of what we have. And I had them already coming to Branson. We had a small amount of our crew stayed with. Most of them left and went with him. I felt like let's you know try to shoot a couple scenes from the movie. If this thing totally falls apart, maybe we'll make a short. Right. And this will have something to salvage this. Uh, so we did the short first, and then we had we pushed the rest of the feature three weeks uh, and tried to kind of regroup and put it together, and uh, kind of succeeded at that. The feature was a was a, just a, a nightmare shoot, but in a, in a really great way. It kind of freed us <laughs> up. It freed us up to kind of do things that we wouldn't have uh, we wouldn't have been able to do. But the, right. the rare thing that's kind of nuts is that. We were, we, in a lot of ways, we were overprepared for the short because these were like five scenes from the feature totally. that we did an extra two days of, of writing on and really kind of hammered out. And so in a lot of ways, those are some of the strongest scenes in the feature now. And then on the other hand of it, usually when you do short to feature, like you have all this time to think about how can I make this small idea bigger and better. Right. And we were in the opposite, but we yeah, were like, way. what from this big idea can we still do? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was kind of a wild way to do it. Cool. Guys, uh, that's Todd Sklar. He's the director of Awful Nice. We're chatting with uh, Todd. We're talking with uh, Alex Rennie and James Pumphrey, the two leads. So, James, you and your, your brother, uh, Alex, over there across the table, kind of... Uh, you beat the shit out of each other a lot in this in this film. We like to get physical. <laughs> it's, a, it's a physical relationship. What's funny is everyone I bumped into outside after talking to, uh, you know, after seeing the film and talking to people, they're like, my brothers are exactly the same <laughs> way. So talk about how'd you develop this kind of sibling, you know, kind of relationship that wasn't just like, we're just going to swear at each other and beat the shit out of each other a lot. You two also kind of loved each other. There was a lot of layers to it. So how'd you develop it? Um, well, um, when I first flew to Branson, I missed like four planes. 
Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I'm fucking super so busy right off the bat. Yeah, we, <laughs> we haven't even met each other yet. We came to the city for like 19 hours. I had to get a hotel room. I didn't bring my phone charger, my computer, or anything. So I'm sitting in this room. Uh, yeah, he's gonna. He missed another one. <laughs> great. All right. How do you miss four flights? Uh, dude? <laughs> well, the first one is fine. After the second one, you gotta that, start looking at. It. To his credit, a lot of that has to do with the fact that when you're flying into Branson, ultimately you had to fly to Kansas City because there's only like two flights to and from Branson. A because, month. A month, yeah. right. And it's all like old people. So Don't it's worry, like, it's only seven hours from Kansas City to Branson. Yeah, so. six in the morning is like the late flight for Branson. Right? So like, <laughs> it's one of those things where if you miss one or two flights, you're going to have to really redirect your travel. Cool, so you you uh, you miss a few flights, then you uh, you meet Alex. And then meet, uh, yeah, and so we ended up staying in this like really, really crazy like Motel 8. And... Uh, like like my key like kept not like the keys like, for, like half of the hotel was abandoned the front desk guy yeah. more keys is the motel 8 like a, a, a third generation motel 6 I think so yeah it's, it's, yeah it's motel 6's grandson yeah. <laughs> this is a motel 8 yeah. so we stay, like you know so um and then we drove like 3 or 4 hours together so we had to wake up at like so, 7 he gets in at like 4 we have to wake up at 7 drive 6 hours to Branson as soon as we get out of the car we got to shoot that first scene at the airport and we hit like a really great uh like block of radio we listened to like a lot of like late late 90s <laughs> yeah. like uh rap rock yeah like, right. a lot and of that like was the first part. you had guys yeah. had met yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you were shooting thing. that day our big well, thing was like we, we yeah. had such a tight schedule they were like instead of sending a pa to pick up pump for you let's get al to do it and maybe they'll like at that point, it was just going to be like a 30-minute car ride. That was going to be a 30-minute car ride. Like, oh, that'll be a good 30 minutes. And I'm like, you know, we'll figure it out from there. It turned into like a whole day trip. Like, <laughs> and at night, it was like a two-day thing. Yeah. And then we pull into, we, we were actually shooting that day at the Branson Airport. <laughs> Where he was originally supposed to fly into. <laughs> so we like, we like roll in. Neither of us have showered. Like, I think we shaved in the parking lot. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just like jumped right into it. Cool, that's James Pumphrey, one of the actors from Awful Nice. We're chatting here with the gents uh, about their film. I got two minutes left with you guys. I'll turn it over to Alex. Alex, tell me, I mean, I was born and raised in Chicago, but I didn't know shit about Branson, Missouri. And I actually just saw the doc about Branson, Missouri. We always lie to strangers, David Wilson's doc. And now I'm like, how the, where did this shit show come from? <laughs> so Alex, tell me a, a little bit. Excellent question. Um, Branson, it, me and Todd. I mean, shit through, shown in a nice way. We oh, in the best way possible. Uh, world's nicest people. Uh, me and Todd. Yeah, me and Todd went to college together at the University of Missouri, and we would go. We went to Branson for something, and then we ended up a going trip. a lake trip or something, and then we ended up going with our filmmaker friend James Ponsolt. Who came up with the idea? Should we be telling people this? He was like, "Dude, you, we should make this." And then, James like, was like, "You guys should make a movie. You guys are brothers." But uh, it's funny because James kind of has a, in addition to being a great filmmaker, he has like an encyclopedic knowledge of just every weird place in America, like in <laughs> and the they're all of, Branson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> think twenty miles. He has a goal. It is like he has this you know mental checklist of odd places That's that he funny. wants to go. And so for him, that was just like, let's go do a scouting trip, a writing retreat, because he wanted to go to Branson, and that turned <laughs> into like. He ended up going on to make a different movie, but for us, that was like, God. We had four more movie. writing trips to Branson. We never got any fucking writing done. We <laughs> would just, writing just hang out and go to like the haunted house or I don't know. It was just go crazy at Branson for four days and then like, oh, we didn't get any fucking writing done. And then go home and try and remember what happened. <laughs> yeah, what happened. Right, right about it. Last thing, Todd, what was the toughest thing about, about making this, this film? Whew. Um, what, what, yeah, what was your top seven? Probably all of it. No, yeah, <laughs> ghost, big ghost problem in Branson. <laughs> no, it's funny. I think a lot of it for me was coming from we we did so I, when we went out to shoot it, we had a really strong script, I would say, and that isn't necessarily what we ended up shooting, and that was partly because of the production, but also partly because of the intention. I really like improv, and I, I wanted to get a lot of the comedians that I love, so you know, James and Brett Gelman's in the film, and Andrew Zbrowski and Josh Fadim, and all these great, great improvisers and great, you know, sketch comedians, and I wanted to be able to kind of let them run with things, and to some extent, I think if you're on a, a tighter, kind of more structured shoot, and only one guy, the director, is letting people go kind of crazy, that can work. This was the type of thing where, like, I was the most put-together person on the crew most of the time, <laughs> and I'm encouraging these guys to go off the rails, and that kind of turned into a real kind of nightmare scenario in post where you're trying to, you know, not just kill your darling, but really, like, kill huge chunks of the movie because they don't work. Right, yeah, I remember uh, in the Q&A yesterday, Brett Gelman, who uh, was hilarious in this, 
you guys would shoot some stuff, and he'd be like, what did we just do? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the camera rolling? <laughs> right. <laughs> but it turned into these great scenes. So talk about for yourself how you're able to kind of balance between, like, I want to let these guys let it rip, but I also need to make sure we have, like, a scene here. Yeah, story of some sort. It's yeah. funny. A lot of it is just trying to hit the right beats in each place. So if you know your story well enough, you can focus on getting what you need and then building from it. I think for this thing... In such a, we were in such a scenario where we were pulling pieces of the story because of the shoot and because of the, the, the time structure and kind of how things were going that we were kind of pulling things out and adding things in without the ability to kind of really stop and take them in and say, are we, is this a square peg in a round hole or is this, is right. this going to be, are we going to have to fix this later? Right. I think for me when I'm shooting, I like to try to do you know, a couple takes where we get everything we need script and story-wise and then do a couple where I let them go crazy. And then the idea is do one or two more where you just pick up things to connect those. Yeah. And the difficult part for me was in a lot, a, a lot of, in a lot of instances, those pickup takes, I was grabbing things that were connecting the comedy that I liked, but there's no way to pull these things into the story. <laughs> right. Right. So, so really, it was just all about kind of like refining the story in post. So I'll, I'll end it kind of here with with the brothers, and then I have a question about Charbonneau. Um, <laughs> Everybody just does. Fucking <laughs> hysterical. But uh, with the brothers. Was there, was there, you know, what, what would you say, was there ever a point where you guys actually did knock each other the fuck out? I've just never, There I've was never... a fucking super giant scene, remember the big stunt scene? <laughs> where we had this whole thing set up, it took like all day to shoot, and where James, um, like Goldberg, spears me over a table and then smashes huge through a table buffet table. with a whole, huge buffet spread on it. And like I remember, seconds before we did it, somebody was like, "Hey, should we take all the toothpicks out of that cheese tray?" Like, before we did it? <laughs> and then that was like, we did one take, and then the stunt guy was like, "All right, you guys know how to do it." I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah." And James was like, I'm not, "I don't know what to do. Like, I know, just fucking hit." Yeah, I'm just gonna. I don't, know how to do it. I, don't know, I don't know how to like pull this. Yeah, he was like, he was like, uh, so like you're gonna you're gonna touch you're gonna his go back with your hand. So then he he's gonna drive you. He's gonna jump. You're but just you're following jump. him. And we were like, I don't know what. He's I was like, about. I'm I'm just gonna like tackle you right. in the back. <laughs> one shot. Anyway, and uh, it ended up, uh, we ended up not using it. The light looked great, though. It's going to be a great trailer. This trailer's going to look like an action. We've got a fucking killer blooper reel. Yeah. All right. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that would be almost twice the length of the movie. (laughs) There has to be a blooper reel. I could watch you guys just smash that arcade machine for an hour. We have a lot. We have a lot. Uh, Just tell us about Charbonneau, and I'm like blanking on the actor's name. Oh, Maloney. Chris Maloney. Oh, Chris Maloney, right. Uh, From... Law and Order or one of those. Yeah. Yep. That, yep. Uh, you. Yep. I didn't even know it was him until I saw the fucking credits. That's so awesome. how did you, which I'm like, okay, they, they got me. I had no <laughs> idea. That's awesome. How did you talk to a guy like Chris Maloney who has played that kind of hard-nosed, you know, pretty straight-laced cop his entire career into, oh, yeah. into playing Charbonneau? Oh, that was, he, he, most of that character development was, was me suggesting something and him taking it ten times further. Like, he was, he was all about the character, all about the script. It was, it was incredible because, like, his manager read, read an early draft of the script, loved it. Was like, oh, I'm cool. shooting Superman right now. I'll get him to read it. <laughs> Let us know your schedule. <laughs> and he, like, flew himself Dude, down. He flew his own plane to yeah. Branson. Yeah. Like, yeah. plane. Because he had four days off, basically. There's a Superman the joke there somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. yeah. Superman, Superman joke. There. Just, all right. Definitely <laughs> Superman <laughs> joke. But he flew himself down. And, and for him, it was like every little suggestion. He just went four times further. He's just such a serious actor in such a great way and loved the comedy of it that... He wanted to develop this character well beyond our wildest dreams, and it was it was it was really a dream come true. It was it was pretty. Neat. It was developed awesome. his own speech impediment. It's like, Showed up with oh, that mustache. Kind of a oh, yeah. his, his wig too. When we were like, we came up with the idea, like maybe this is like a Roy Orbison type of guy. Like he just isn't quite comfortable with who he is and not making it in in showbiz or whatever. And he was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think I got something for that. It's like his wig. It's not the costume department. It's Which is awesome because there was no budget for wigs. Oh, so absolutely. Then. Well, surprisingly, actually, most of the budget was for that. <laughs> but that got cut too. Go on. I'm excited for everyone to see this film. Todd, James, Alex, well, thanks for uh, hanging out on screen. Thank you, awesome. man. Thank you, man. All right, guys. Uh, that was the actors, Alex Rennie and James Pumphrey, along with the writer-director, Todd Sklar, talking about Awful Nice. My name's Mike McNamara. Thanks for swinging by screen. Talk with you again soon.